George, this is this is crazy. You have over 33 years. You've built up a lab, the church lab, and your lab has a hundred people now. That how is this? How do you possibly figure out how to manage this? This is this is important because we have now we're moving into these labs at Boyden has a really popular now lab. We have more of these labs sort of popping up with these really roaring groups of, of scientists and engineers, intellectuals pushing the boundaries of knowledge and we want to know how to best design the, the, the frameworks and the flows of information in these labs. So, you know, maybe we start off by asking you, you know, here you are um, running this lab. How do you pick what to research? And how do you delegate um, research to other people? Yeah. Well, a lot of this has to do with co-mentoring. So uh, I co-mentor with Ed Boyden and Bob Langer and Sangeeta Vettia. We, we help each other out because uh, we're running kind of similar kinds of labs. Um, and there's co-mentoring within the lab. Uh, uh, you don't necessarily need a big hierarchy um, if you've got uh, kind of goodwill. Um, I select for people that are nice. I mean, that's one of my yeah. first interview questions is, 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 or discussions is, is how you achieve that kind of environment. Um, you you want to have a, a, an environment where failure is an option, but fail fast to get on to the next thing, do a bunch of things in parallel. Um, it's like the lesson of biology is not to make one prototype, but a trillion prototypes. Well, it's hard to do a trillion projects, but you can at least do more than one. Um, you know, have a, a kind of a, a, a real group size of about three. So, so the hundred is just a group, bunch of groups of three. That, okay. Um, have interdisciplinary teams. So it's hard to make an interdisciplinary team out of disciplinarians. So it's easier to make it out of people that are themselves interdisciplinary. So if yes. you have like two people that know two different languages, even if there's no overlap mm -hmm. of any of those languages, they, uh, they know how to gain a third one. So they each gain a third one that's a shared language and then they can, okay. and they can build up this network of people that are just, then you can decorate it with a few disciplinarians at the end. But the major network of, of uh, know-how, I think has to be people who feel comfortable with two or more fields in their own head. Interesting. Um, and this is like molecular biology and computer science, maybe something like that. You know, or, you know, uh, philosophy or ethics and ethics. and uh, and medicine or yeah. uh, you know optics and genetics Ooh. for to, so yeah. you can know the three dimensional structure of the of the genome and yeah. etc. There, there's, there's uh, and once you get used to it, then it become it becomes it, you know you're good at whatever you do. And if you have a lab that does interdisciplinary stuff and does entrepreneurship and does um, and mm -hmm. really generally has its sights on transformative technology. Yeah. Um, then something that seems like science fiction becomes more routine uh, yeah. because that's what you do every day is you transform things that look hard into things that are actually easy. You don't want to be actual heroes. You just want to find the low-hanging fruit and, and help everybody get to 